Hello, good afternoon. Um, my name is Jae Yoon uh, from LG Electronics. I'm a software engineer and actually leading a WebOS graphics component. So um, I'm so pleased to have a chance uh, to talk about WebOS as well as uh, WebOS Compositor uh, that, that I'm currently working on in this um, Qt World Summit. So thanks to Qt Company and as well as um, the people here partic participating in my session. So what I'm going to talk about uh, today is about WebOS Compositor, which is called as Lunar Surface Manager. So someone may recall the name or not, um, as there were some presentations in the previous uh, Qt events. Um, Lunar Surface Manager is a graphics compositor and window manager in WebOS, uh, which is based on Wayland and Qt. So it is actually a Qt Quick application running on top of Qt Wayland and the UI part is written in QML. So Qt is the key component of WebOS Compositor, actually. So there is also a reason why I'm doing a technical uh, presentation here about WebOS Compositor in uh, Qt World Summit. Uh, as you know, uh, LG Electronics is one of our global consumer pro uh, electronics pro uh, manufacturer, and we have lots of uh, product lineups uh, from home appliances, and to cutting edge smart devices like uh, smart TVs and even robotics and automotives nowadays. So today in particular, what I'd like to share is that uh, our um, experience is to extend WebOS Compositor to those um, various products. So here's the table of contents of my slide. So first I'm going to introduce Lunar Service Manager, what it is. Uh, uh, to give you some fundamental knowledge about it, and also like to give you some uh, overall architecture uh, to understand uh, which specific Qt components uh, are being used in LSM, especially. And also like to talk about WebOS TV because uh, LSM was born in uh, WebOS TV actually, and what issues were there uh, from the architectural perspective. And the second part of this presentation. Uh, I'd like to talk about how we are extending LSM uh, to various products. As the beginning of the second part, I'll um, show you uh, challenges we faced. Those challenges mostly come from the architectural issues to be mentioned in the WebOS TV slide. Uh, then I would continue talking about uh, missions to address those challenges. And there are a couple of missions we have set for that, the five, five, five of them. So let me go through one by one while I show you uh, uh, practical solutions uh, we have implemented in LSM today. So um, let's get started with the introduction. Uh, Lunar Surface Manager, in short, LSM, uh, is the window manager of your OS component, as I mentioned. And on the right-hand side, you can see uh, two screen captures. So one is from OS TV, this one. And yeah, so the second one is from, coming from WebOS OSE, which is called Open Source Edition. I believe many of people here uh, may have ever looked at the WebOS TV before, which has the sensational user interface we introduced in 2013 C show. And, but not sure how many people are aware about this one, um, WebOS OSE, because it's quite new compared to WebOS TV because it was released uh, earlier this year. I'll talk about more about uh, WebOS OSE today because um, most of uh, implementation is based on WebOS OSE. So let me go just through the rest of the country uh, in this slide. Mm, LSM, as I uh, mentioned, is a, web, a window management uh, window manager in WebOS. So it means that um, it manages windows such as application surfaces and system UIs. And also it controls uh, input events from input devices such as um, keyboard, mice, touch screen, something like that. In addition, uh, input method and also virtual keyboard is one of the features that LSM provides. So most importantly, uh, LSM is written in QML, as I mentioned. So most importantly for, uh, in this Qt World Summit, I'd like to emphasize that LSM is written in Qt, and it is a Qt QML Wayland Compositor, 
meaning that it uses um, Qt Wayland as a uh, Wayland Composer framework. And it uses also um, Qt Quick and QML for the UI and the scene graph handling. So LSM is now uh, completely open sourced via github.com. So if you visit this website, github.com slash webwestwse, there are lots of uh, uh, WebOS components uh, available, and also Luna Surface Manager is all over there. So I just captured some screenshot on this slide, but if you go to the website from your browser, you can see uh, the details like this. Let me show you some example. So here's the website uh, from github.com slash webOSWC. And this is the introduction page. And there are lots of components there. And we have um, Luna Surface Manager source code here. So most of the things I would like to talk about today is implemented in this um, repository. So let's go back again um, to the slide. So source code is a prep, uh, available in GitHub. We released this uh, WebOS open source edition in March this year, probably. Uh, though it is not the same uh, with the product that as you released, like WebOS TV or WebOS Smartwatch, for example, but it consists of the complete set of core uh, WebOS components, such as LSM. So all contents in my presentation are based on the source code available via WebOS OSC, as I mentioned, so you can find the real implementation over there. So, um, WebOS, as you know, as you may know, uh, WebOS is uh, using uh, Open Embedded as a build system. So here you can see the recipe of LSM. So there is a meta layer component in the um, GitHub. So if you find the recipe, which is called lunar-surfacemanager.bb, you can find this information there. So what I'd like to talk in this slide is that which dependency, I mean the build dependency that LSM has. So as you can see, we set the build dependency for LSM to Qt Wayland and Qt Declarative. And those two components uh, also depends on Qt Base. So that means LSM cannot be built without them. In other words, they are dependent, they are, um, LSM is using those kind of uh, Qt components. Here is the architectural diagram of LSM. Uh, let me go through one by one. So as a Qt GUI application, LSM requires a QPA, a Qt a platform abstraction uh, layer. And we use different QPAs in different hardware platforms, as you can guess. So uh, I'll touch that part in the upcoming slide. And the main body of LSM is uh, actually a Qt Wayland Compositor. Uh, it also uses uh, Qt Quick View and QMLs in order to manage um, graphic scenes using Qt Scene Graph and also to implement System UI and QML. As you know, Qt Wayland is very well integrated with um, uh, Qt Wayland is very well integrated with QML, so LSM is taking advantage of that. And next, LSM because LSM is a Wayland compositor, so we have Wayland protocol layer here and also adaptation layer for clients. And WebOS supports various types of web, uh, WLAN applications, such as um, web applications via Web Manager, and Qt QML native applications, and also SDL native applications for games, and even pure native application that interface um, uh, WLAN directly. And these clients, so, like all other Wayland implementations does, uh, implementations do, uh, all of a graphic content sharing will be done by Wayland is just that. And also, LSM is one of our uh, WebOS components, so it uh, uses LunaBus, which is the IPS channel used in WebOS um, when communicating with other components, like this. So let's talk about WebOS TV first. So we started with WebOS TV in 2013, and TV products uh, in our LG 
uses our own um, TV SOC, in-house uh, SOC, or some portion of uh, third-party SOCs. The point is that TV uses their own uh, TV specific SOC, which means that we need a specific uh, QPA for TV SOC. And also, TV has its own uh, UX, TV UX, of course, so system UI needed to be uh, written as per that uh, UX. So as the TV was the first uh, web product in LG, and, and no other productization, productization, productization plan exists at the time, uh, we also had to uh, deliver the product in time, and we, so those kind of reasons, we had implemented the compositor with TV product specific logic. So as a result, LSM was um, created uh, with lots of TV dependencies, mainly in these three areas in orange color. Since WebOS TV is very the first uh, WebOS product, and also the best practice for us, it had been used for a reference uh, when we were asked to apply WebOS to other products. So again, in my company LG has so many product lineups in various areas, and needs for um, embedded OS was also increasing, so there were many opportunities inside uh, the company. However, um, there were many challenges as well in front, of, in front of us. For example, for smartwatches, we had to support a different uh, SOC from TV like Qualcomm or some, those kind of mobile AP. And we had to support uh, the smaller size of display, for example, and also uh, support different screen resolutions, different input uh, devices like touch screens. Uh, there was another project for the refrigerator with the display, as you can see here. That is a WebOS bridge. It required a portrait mode and a different type of display with the transparency control, this one. And we also have robots, which has two displays, one for a robot's face, one for the informative display on his body. So, and those kind of two displays needs to show in different resolutions. And nowadays, not in this slide, but uh, we have more press from automotive areas. So, as you know, vehicle products uh, like cluster, informative screen, and the center stack, and real estate infotainment system, those kind of things requires much more various features that uh, don't exist in TV products. So from these um, various opportunities, we have learned that um, LSM needs to be ready not only for the common feature, but also the extensions for product specific features for these uh, various product lineups at the, th at the same time. So, so we have set a couple of missions to overcome those challenges. So the first, we need to support different SOCs, of course, and that means we need to have uh, right uh, QPAs for different platforms. And also, uh, we wanted to share core compositor features. The composition of application surfaces and system UIs is one of fundamental features, and thus it should be used in common uh, for uh, all products. Input event handling is one of also common feature we should share. Uh, in addition, uh, those kind of common features should be flexible as much as possible. For example, display resolutions may differ in different products, but it's common feature as well. Even it may differ in some products, even it may differ in different model variations. So supporting various screen resolution is, more, uh, is also important and uh, one of common feature we should support. The third one, extending VLAN protocols. So uh, WebOS is using VLAN protocols. Sometimes we face some requirements that cannot be uh, implemented in the existing VLAN protocols. In that case, someone may think that we may uh, change or modify the existing protocol, but in that case, it impacts to all existing clients and also incurs some uh, fragmentation. So we needed an extensible way um, to uh, cover that uh, challenge. So that is the idea behind the plugin uh, architecture for the compositor protocol extension. And the fourth one is uh, most important 
thing among this, differentiate uh, window layout and management policy. Uh, as different products have uh, different UX, they have different window layouts and different uh, window management policy, of course. So we cannot assume, for example, that all products need a, a launcher, for example. And we cannot assume all products need notification, but some requires notification UI, some don't. So it means that we need a way to implement a uh, completely different window layout and also different policy as per the product UX. Okay, sorry. And the next item is the system UI as per uh, product UX. So it is uh, somewhat related to the previous mission, but it's uh, more focusing on the implementing how how implement the system UX and, uh, as per the specific uh, uh, spec. It can be implemented as a Wayland client because LSM is a, one of our Wayland compositor. And also it can be implemented as a Q, uh, QML module because LSM is written in QML. So those kind of uh, topics can be covered in the coming slides. So the first thing, support different hardware platforms. So it is obvious. So if you use different SOCs, we need a different QPA. That is the, what QPA does, actually. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, in AWS TV, we use a, a proprietary uh, QPA for in-house SOCs. Uh, for some other products, uh, which is based on DRM devices, we can use EGLFS, which is one of um, our component in Qt. Uh, so the important thing is that we need to uh, ch choose a right QPA for a uh, uh, right uh, for the specific uh, SOC. Uh, not only for the graphics, but also the input event handling is uh, one of uh, feature that uh, QPA should uh, support. So in case of LG TV, we use a proprietary QPA and also we have a proprietary input device stack. So in that case, we do not use any um, uh, input uh, support like EVDAV provided by Qt. So in that case, we uh, implemented our own um, implementation. Uh, in the case we use uh, EGLFS like uh, DRM-based platforms, we use uh, EVDAV of course, uh, for our input uh, subsystem. So um, the mission for uh, support different hardware platforms, the conclusion is quite clear. So we could achieve this mission easily using uh, some uh, implementing uh, QPA for the right um, uh, SOC. So, we, so I'd like to say that uh, the, it is one of major advantage of using Qt, obviously. Choosing a right QPA would be enough to support a uh, specific hardware. There is a, a much a big benefit for us. Second, uh, how, to, how to share core compositor features. Uh, so Qt WLAN is already uh, providing many uh, WLAN composer features. What I want to talk about here is not about something inside Qt WLAN, but uh, about more features added on top of that, on, the, uh, uh, on top of Qt WLAN. So uh, we have WebOS Core Compositor class, which is, uh, which is a descendant class of uh, QWLAN Q, uh, Q Compositor, which is defined in uh, QWLAN. And it is, defined at the, it is defined as a Q module. So any component in WebOS, uh, they, they can use uh, our WebOS Compositor as a Q module, doing like uh, specifying this option. So here's the show list of um, uh, features that uh, WebOS Core Compositor and its friend classes implement. We have defined window model for wayland uh, surface, uh, surface items. It's uh, one of um, data model of wayland surfaces items. And that can be used by corresponding views uh, defined in QML. We also support various screen resolution, orientation, and high DPI if needed. Uh, these features are written based on the fundamental of Q screen or Q window that uh, Q uh, provides. For example, uh, when we use high DPI scaling to render UIs, so we use a high DPI scaling feature provided by Qt 
And also we use a uh, rotation transform to support portrait mode, for example. And we also use a resizing of a Q window to support various uh, screen resolution. Uh, multiple displays is a somewhat experimental feature at the moment, but we also taking advantage of feature implemented EGLFS in case there is one DLR device that has multiple DRM connectors. There are some other different case that cannot uh, EGLFS cover, uh, EGLFS cannot cover, but we are currently working on to extend EGLFS feature to cover that case as well but it is currently WAP, I mean, the work in progress, so it may not be available in uh, WebSOSC and github.com at the moment, but will be available later. Input handling uh, is one of key features of code compositor need to provide. Is uh, one of the example we extended is the multiple pointing devices. So as you may know, um, window system interface in Qt does not uh, carry uh, device identification. So, but we need that information in WebOS internally. So we have to uh, a Qt event to carry that data and use it uh, at the within protocol interface so that we can deliver events uh, from different uh, devices through multiple uh, wavelength seats. Uh, for window input, uh, uh, no, for uh, input method, we also implemented our own WebOS input method plugin, which is based on Q input method uh, uh, class. So that means any Q, uh, QML application to work with the input method, uh, just simply, simply uh, uh, set the plugin name for the, our WebOS input method plugin to uh, use this uh, input method. Uh, framework. So this one is the third mission. So how to extend wayland protocol as needed. So uh, in case we need a different or custom extended wayland protocol, uh, we provide a plugin for wayland protocol extension which is called WebOS Composer Extension. So it is written in a Qt plugin, so it can be loaded at one time as needed. And main concept is that you can write your own custom wavelength protocol and you can write a plugin for that. Then you can load it as needed at one time. If the protocol requires some interaction uh, with uh, existing data structure, for example, uh, it is inevitable to modify some of uh, core compositor logic. But the advantage here is that uh, protocol extension logic itself can be written in a plugin and it can be enabled, disabled easily, and also even re-implemented in a different way uh, without uh, modifying the core logic. And the fourth topic is about within, uh, no, window layout and management policy, which is more tricky part. So now you are seeing the two screenshots, one from the OSC and one from the TV. Below, I've added some diagram, a simplified diagram, that gives you some quick look for window layouts. So as you can see, there are uh, same full screen view on both sides, which uh, occupies the full screen. But on, the other, on the other hand, launcher looks different. Launcher on the left hand side is somewhat um, vertical and anchored to the right, while the launcher on the right hand side is, looks different. So launcher is conceptually a common system UX, but it looks, its look and feel may differ as per the product spec. So that is the challenge we need to uh, address. So how to deal with this? That is the question I'd like to uh, talk about um, in the next slides. So window layout. Window layout is inherently uh, from the product uh, spec, though it contains views that can be used uh, commonly in different products. But QML scene is uh, statically, uh, usually statically defined uh, by the item hierarchy uh, coded in QML. Uh, one may think that they can be loaded dynamically using um, loader, for example, or they can have uh, different look and feels by altering uh, properties at one time. But uh, using a loader or properties uh, bindings uh, would be unclear compared to the statically um, structured QML scene. And also, it would be harder to debug uh, since the uh, scene can vary at one time depending on conditions that uh, properties rely on. So we thought that it would be nice if the scene 
could be caught aesthetically as much as possible and could be seen as per the product spec properly. Window management policy is something that controllers do. So for example, if something that uh, like a view, there is a view should behave uh, on an event from the view uh, from B. So there is definitely uh, defined by the product and uh, spec, spec, uh, spec two. Uh, even it can be different for the uh, window layout. For example, two model variations in a single product may have different policies for the same UI. So there could be uh, different requirements from different uh, products, different model variations that affect to the window layout and measurement policy. But how to deal with this? There's the question. So we introduced uh, called, uh, compositor based architecture. It is the new architecture of LSM we introduced in WebOS OS E, which defines the baseline of uh, WebOS Compositor and Common System UI. There are three design objectives here, but uh, I don't think we have much time to cover all of them. Just skip this topic at the moment. Let me just talk about key architecture. Uh, to achieve these objectives, uh, modularity, extensibility, completeness, um, we consider two key architectures here. So for the native part of the compositor, we need a plugin interface uh, so that the product uh, extension can easily uh, add and extend their own feature on top of the compositor base. For the QML, uh, we define a QML model that overrides the baseline of uh, QML scene and controllers. Those two can be uh, added optionally. So uh, if they exist, the extension will work, otherwise the compositor base uh, will be running uh, by default. So looking at the compositor, WebOS Compositor plugin interface is quite straightforward because it actually uh, one of plugin that extends the ex existing WebOS Compositor classes like WebOS Core Compositor, WebOS, WebOS Compositor window. So if you look into the source code in uh, github.com, you will see how it works. It's quite simple. So if there is a plugin specified, uh, LSM will load the plugin and use that uh, extended classes as a main um, uh, uh, instances. Otherwise, if there is no plugin specified, uh, default class like WebOS Core Compositor or WebOS Compositor window will be used. That is the idea. Next, WebOS Compositor Base. This is the name of a QML uh, module that constructs the baseline of um, QML scene. It contains the common uh, WebOS UX like full screen view, overlay view, launcher, notifications, something like that. Those kind of things you can see in WebOS OS E. Since it is a QML module, it defines a couple of QML types that can be used by the uh, importers. Uh, compositor UI uh, elements such as full screen view, uh, overlay view are defined as uh, this, those kind of types. In addition, uh, it is assumed that uh, these types can be redefined by another uh, QML module named as uh, WebOS Compositor. So thus all QML files that refers to a type defined in WebOS Compositor base module, they also import uh, WebOS Compositor module so that if a type is defined in there, it can take precedence over the same defined in WebOS Compositor base. Since WebOS Compositor is an optional QML module, uh, it is, uh, we use directory imports uh, rather than the model name import uh, to avoid errors. So let's see how WebOS Compositor module redefines the types. Here's an example, short example. Uh, so here, WebOS Compositor example redefines some of types like uh, views root, full screen view. So views root is type of uh, type that defines the first step uh, QML scene uh, from the root item. So it defines the main stacking order of surface views and system UI elements that consist of a uh, compositor scene. For example, views root in WebOS Compositor base has full screen view, overlay view, launcher, those kind of things. So if you want to add a new item in between, uh, for example, overlay view and launcher, you can write your own QML, for example, my views root uh, .qml, and define it as a, a views, views root type in your WebOS Compositor module. That is the way you can um, extend. Now, since WebOS Compositor module takes precedence over WebOS Compositor base, then my views root uh, QML 
uh, would be used uh, instead of the, the same type defined in the best composer base. In addition, um, you can also redefine the existing surface view like a uh, full screen view here. So if you define full screen view like this as uh, my full screen view.qml, you can override all of things defined in full screen view in the best compositor base. If there is no type defined, on the other hand, in the best compositor, then the type in uh, the best compositor base will be used by default. And what about controllers? It's, it works in the same manner. The same logic applies. So we have the main controller logic in ViewState controller, for example, and you can redefine the controller logic by defining a new type in the WebOS Compositor module. So this is the last mission uh, I'd like to mention. So system UI as per product UX, as I mentioned in the uh, slide, we can implement a system UI in a two different ways. One is a lot of QML module, the other is Wayland client. Uh, since LSM is a Wayland compositor, uh, you can write system UI uh, as a uh, Wayland client. I think there is a user option that all Wayland compositors uh, can choose. But there is another option for LSM here because LSM is using QML, is uh, the loadable QML module. So you can write a UI component in QML and make it loaded at on time as needed. Um, unfortunately, there is no actual use case in a WebOS OSC repository at the moment because it only uses WebOS Compositor base, the baseline QML scene, but you can easily imagine how it works if you are familiar with uh, Loader. And we have two, so we have two options, but they have pros and cons as uh, described here. So for example, Wayland clients are best secure because they can run in a separate process. So they can be isolated completely if needed. While uh, QML module needs to be run uh, as a part of a composer process. On the other hand, uh, for the memory uses, for example, Wayland client requires more memory because it requires Wayland buffers between um, clients and composer. While QML module doesn't require those kind of memories, so relatively using less memory for print. So there you have uh, different pros and cons, so you can choose one of, one of them as needed. So this could be the last slide, I think. Um, so this is the, the diagram, again, with the new uh, refactor uh, stuff. So we have QPA for our write um, SOC. We can choose, and we also have a new architecture which is called uh, Compositor Base, which can be uh, used different products without any uh, modification on the core uh, logic. And also, we can provide a system UI as QML module or Wayland clients. So this diagram is a very simplified version, but as I presented uh, in a previous slide, we have considered lots of things to overcome the challenges I said before. So. If you visit website, I mean webosc.org and github.com slash webosc, you can find the actual result, actual implementation we have. So yeah, if you have some time, just please take a look at them. And you can also ask some questions via webosc.org forum, as well as via some Q&A in this session after that. So this is my end of uh, presentation. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, just let me know. We are a little bit over time, but uh, as we are starting the party anyhow now, is there any question left? There was some hand raised. And by the way, it's completely funny to stand here in front and everybody seeing his smartphone getting up and taking a picture. <laughs> through the lines. It shows the big interest. That's good. So uh, thank you for the talk. It was very relevant. It's very related to what we're working on. So I think it's really, really interesting. Uh, my question is maybe more uh, from a distance. Is there any web left in WebOS? Is there any web like HTML? Yes, we, yes, web is there. 
uh, we mainly use web technology for uh, applications. So we support, as I mentioned in the earlier sl uh, slide, we have a web manager, which uh, runs a web application as well as clients. So you can still uh, be able to use web technologies to, to implement applications. So that would be like Netflix and so on, or what? Sorry? Like Netflix or those apps like yeah, that? Yeah, Netflix, uh, if you can run Netflix via web technology, if, because Netflix can run on top of web browser, for example, that is also possible. 